the global force components Q acting on the truss can be related to its global displacements D by the formula Q is equal to KD with K being our structure stiffness matrix. We must then partition the matrix according to the known and unknown displacements and forces we have present. Multiplying out the K and D matrices, we get an expression for QU and QK in terms of K and D. In our case, we have two unknown displacements and two known forces. So applying numbers to this, we get 0 and minus 20 for QK is equal to AE multiplied by 1.4140 0 and 0 0.48 which is the top 2 by 2 of our structure matrix this is multiplied by D1 and D2 our unknown displacements Multiplying out the matrices, we realize that D1 is equal to 0, but D2 will have a value. Using the values provided for A, the cross-sectional area, as 300 mm squared, and E, the stiffness, as 200 GPA, Bringing units into order, we get minus 20 is equal to 28,800 by D2. So therefore, D2 is equal to minus 6.944 by 10 to the minus 4 meters, or 0.6944 millimeters of deflection. Starting with member 1 we label the near and far end of the member. The formula for calculating the force in each member is Q is equal to AE over L multiplied by two matrices, the first being minus lambda X minus lambda Y lambda X lambda Y and the second being the displacement at the near X, displacement at the near Y, displacement at the far X, displacement at the far Y which are labelled 5, 6, 1 and 2 as shown in the diagram. As we know already, the length of our member is 1.5 metres. And our A and E are the same from previously. A is equal to 0 0.003 metres squared and E is 2 by 10 to the 8 kilonewton per metre squared. So applying numbers to this equation, calculate the force in each member, we get 0 0.003 by 2 by 10 to the 8 over 1.5 meters. Using our lambdas again, it's minus 0 0.8, minus 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 0 0.6. This is multiplied by our near and far degrees of freedom. 0, 0, 0 are the first three degrees of freedom for 5, 6 and 1. And the displacement at the far y, um, which is degree of freedom 2, is minus 6.944 by 10 to the minus 4 meters. Calculating this out, we get 40,000 by our lambda x, our lambda y, and our lambda x, which are all by 0. Therefore, our lambda y, our last lambda y, 0.6 is multiplied by minus 6.944 by 10 to the minus 4. This gives us a value of minus 16.67 kilonewtons, and this is in compression. Now we repeat this procedure for member 2, with labeling our near and far ends again, and our degrees of freedom 1 and 2, 3 and 4. So our Q2 is equal to the same A and D 0 0.003 by 2 by 10 to the 8. Our length this time is 1.8 meters.
multiply again by our minus lambda x, minus lambda y, lambda x, and lambda y, which are minus 1, 0, 1, and 0. Our near y displacement, labeled number 2, is the only displacement not equal to 0 in this. Therefore, we multiply minus 1 by 0, 0 by minus 6.944, 1 by 0 and 0 by 0 therefore our Q2 our force in number 2 is equal to 0 we now calculate the force in number 3 and we should be expecting a similar result to the force in member 1 as it is the same length same cross sectional area and stiffness our lambda x and lambda y are 0.8 and minus 0.6 therefore we should expect a similar value 16.67 kilonewtons but this time it is positive therefore telling us that the member is in tension. Now that we have the force in each member and all displacements obtained, the question is now complete. In order to obtain the unknown remaining forces in this truss, simple matrix manipulation can take place, similar to the manipulation we used find the unknown displacements earlier in the video.